Hey guys, welcome to Cult Film Review, the podcast where we discuss the films you love but no one else gets and we see if they still hold up. Tonight, we're drowning cats, we're eating spaghetti in a bathtub, and we're taping our nipples to make them look puffy. Because we're talking about the 1997 indie film Gummo. So let's start the show. Your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex. 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 Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Alright guys, uh, before we get to Gummo, let me please first say this. Please subscribe to our show and uh, leave us a review. It helps us out a bunch, helps us climb the charts, and it helps more people find us and helps us bring you a better show. And it comes to your phone automatically or whatever you listen to us on. And you don't have to worry about it. I, I love how we have to explain how, how it works. <laughs> like, like, people have, like people have listened to podcasts are, you know what? You, you subscribe to us, it comes automatically on your phone. What? Grandma? <laughs> Grandma? Are you listening? <laughs> it comes right on your phone. You just got to get an upgrade. Go from the 3G. You got to get a 6, sure. a 5, maybe a 4. <laughs> if you didn't know who that was, that was Michael Salustio. Hi, everyone. We're also joined with Chris Willenbrecht. Hey, what's up? And Kyle Smith. Hey, how's it going? As usual. So we are here to talk about Gummo today. This is Chris's pick. Yep. Chris, I really got to ask you why you picked Gummo. Uh, okay. Uh, two reasons. First reason is I saw this movie when I was like 15 years old. I think I saw it on IFC and I didn't know what to make of it. And it was probably like a beginning uh, introduction to like an art film for me. So seeing it, I was kind of like, whoa, this is really interesting and really bizarre and out there and unlike anything I'd ever seen. Um, I planned on doing it. I just didn't know when. But then when I went out to Austin, I met one of our uh, our listeners, our fans, the Den Archive on Instagram. We hung out and stuff, and she. This is a this is a film that she really liked and and requested. So it's not really a fan pick. I was gonna do it anyways, but uh, <laughs> fucker, uh, she's she <laughs> she called it second. I called it first. Not, not a, <laughs> but it's Steeler <laughs> Thunder. Yeah, no, right? I wanted to do it, and she she just you know reinforced the fact that we should cover this film on cult film and review. I yeah, all right. <laughs> Did anyone great. Am I the only one who had not seen this film? Because I had not. I not only had I not seen it. I personally have never heard of this movie. Please, the internet, don't attack me for not ever hearing this mo- <laughs> of this movie, but I had never even heard of it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was the only one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I, I, I actually have a question <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Like, how, Kyle, how did you first see this movie? Um, I, it was ex-girlfriend um, brought it to my attention, and... I was intrigued to see it because I remember um, going to to uh, like I was remember shopping around at Hollywood Video and always seeing the cover art and this the the side profile of the main character and being so intrigued as to what the hell this even is and um, she had she had she had brought it up and I was like oh yeah I remember this I remember this movie I remember the 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 cover let's check it out so that was where mm-hmm. I thought that was probably uh, that was probably uh, four four years ago three years ago something like that. What about you, Mike? Man, I think I just ca- I think I just caught it on like Sundance or something like that, or maybe I picked it out on I think it was on Netflix at some point in time. It was. That's when I watched it. I think that's when I. Yeah. No, I saw it earlier than that. I saw it. I saw it well, in like the early aughts. Mm-hmm. Definitely saw it like in the early aughts. So <laughs> I'm gonna the early go. Aughts. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with it. I probably saw it on like IFC or Sundance yeah, yeah. or something like it had that. To, it might have even been Sundance for me too. Yeah, I I'm not 100 yeah. sure, but one of those channels. But keep in mind also when I say it was like three, maybe four years ago. I don't know. My 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 concept of time uh-huh. <laughs> has disappeared. It's really bad. So so the director of this also uh, Har- was it Harmony? What's for the, Corrine? Corrine uh, also co-wrote Kids. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he wrote kids. Uh, wrote all of kids. Well, no, he. Did he write all of it? Pretty sure. He, I I'm thought, pretty sure uh, he was uh, the main David, writer. David, whatever. And he's also known for Spring Breakers, uh, Trash Humpers. <laughs> That's like some weird. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a uh, Rihanna music video, which you know that makes sense though. It comes yeah. out of nowhere to me. Does that make sense? I've never seen it. Really? It does make sense to me that he would do a music video, yeah. just mm-hmm. seeing his kind of visual After style. Spring Breakers? Can you, just, yeah, can you so. just say no to Rihanna? I don't think you can. I wouldn't. If Rihanna, 
<laughs> I didn't mean like that, Kyle. Yeah, I, no. Neither did I. What's wrong with you, Cody? If Rihanna showed up in this room right now and she's like, this podcast is mine, I'd be like, all right. Guess what, guys? <laughs> you got, got it. A, <laughs> guess, sorry, guys. Call Film Review starring Rihanna. <laughs> oh, really? Well, a bunch of turncoats, I see. <laughs> bunch of turncoats. Sorry, you're not Rihanna. That's how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's how I felt. Not that I wasn't Rihanna, but that's how I felt when it, when I first watched this movie. I was like, D- "What are these son of a bitches trying to do? Is there some kind of conspiracy of like, let's just pick a f- fuck you, Cody films?" Oh, you think the, that's what the, the what inspired the, it for the you month know, of I, November? I, 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 I like, did there was think a little, to myself, like, there's a little co-host get together, like we all <laughs> no. got together, had a little talk, like. What do you I'm mean gonna, for the month? I'm gonna pick Dick Tracy. Fuck him. What? Em. Fuck you. Dick Tracy's then, a great movie. Then we jumped to Chris. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna. I, I, you know what? I, fuck him. I'm gonna. I will pick say. Them up. I will say before we jump fully into this film. I will say I was completely ta- like blown away that you didn't like it. I thought for sure it'd be up your up your alley. Yeah, me but we're too. not gonna talk about it anymore because no. that's done. It's you done. Go this back and listen to the episode. Up his alley. I thought Dick Tracy would oh, be up his okay. alley. I'm sorry. This one now. I never thought it. when you <laughs> when you said it. I was like, ooh, he, he gonna hate that. Yeah. Oh, he gonna hate that. I thought I'm like he's gonna hate it as much as he hate a whole. Holy Mountain. Yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> so, well, let's find out. Let's find out <laughs> when we come right back. Senior Ohio. Senior Ohio. A few years ago, a tornado hit this place. It killed people left and right. Dogs died. Cats died. Houses were split open, and you could see necklaces hanging from branches of trees. All right, guys, so we're back, and we are talking about the 1997 film Gummo. Uh, let's start off here. I, I want to ask this question first. Uh, is an art house? Fi- it's an art house film, obviously, but is it a cult film, or is it is it cult film, or is it a cult uh, filmmaker? Is it? He's saying, is it a is it a cult because of the filmmaker, yeah, exactly. or is the film itself that, a that, cult? That's film? a. That, like, I feel like that's a legit question. Yeah. It okay. Is. <laughs> so, so in my opinion, this this is like, I feel like this is like a quintessential cult film. Like, if we're trying to define the word cult, I feel like you almost need to be a part of one to like this film. It's this. This is not a film. Like when we say this film isn't for everyone, this film definitely is not for everyone. So. um so I do think it's a cult film, and I think he just kind of comes along with that because he's the writer and director. He's the vision, the vision of what this is. So, um, so I think it's kind of one and the same. Yeah, and I would like to to like piggyback off of that. Like, I wouldn't quite say he's a cult film director because you named off a couple of his other films, and it's shit I've never even heard of. Like, usually a cult film director, like anything he touches, gains this rabid fan base. But there's 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 select films that he's made that that do get that following that that grip onto it. I almost feel like he did he got that though with Spring Breakers. Yeah, he did. He Spring got Breakers, that with Spring Breakers. But I don't know if that Spring Breakers was so much. I mean, was it a cult film? Or was it just because it was super controversial? I think about, it is considered. Uh, uh, no, I think I've it's seen it on some film. lists. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I believe it. I believe it. It is because there. I I only know two types of people: people that loved it and people that hated it. Yeah. And, he, and he definitely you know? sets, he definitely has a, a, a unique style. As a, as a director and a writer, mm-hmm. to where it's this um, brutal honesty, almost. I, I don't know if it's honesty either. It's almost documentary style. But no, it's like this brutal, exaggerated honesty. Like I'm from Missouri. I I don't. I didn't run in circles like this, <laughs> but I've known people, people like that yeah. who like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and not maybe to this extent. But pretty damn close. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It it it, deal, it deals with an area of America that fewer uh, uh, privy to to ever can actually we, experiencing. Can I think. we, if you want to put a, if you want to put a, like a term on it, can we call it, can we call it like hyper reality? Well, I was no, actually no. gonna, I was gonna say like, is this scarier than like a reality TV show? You know, is this like, um, I mean, this is 1997. You're getting, you kind of do peer into what seems to be a reality somewhere. It is, yeah. but the way it's edited and the way it's shot almost purely makes it a surrealistic mm-hmm. interpretation of that. Yeah. So it, it's hard for me to say because I, 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 those people were real. Mm-hmm. Those houses were real. Everything that kind of happened in the film was real. But the way he cut it, the way he did things, the right. way he told the story, that's all serious. 
that's completely surre- uh, surrealistic. Yeah. Is that the word? Do you, you, you surreal? Want to know how, you want to know how I explained it to myself, this yeah. movie? Um, I explained it to myself as the story wasn't so much from the perspective of the people who were in the movie as so much this was the story of the town and, and moments or segments of the town after this tornado had hit. I would, uh, I, I would actually, I, I would kind of agree with that. And there's something that I thought to myself towards the end of the of viewing the film, and I and, and he does a lot. Of, he does a lo- there's a lot of scenes where he just he just hangs on a shot for for a while, and for for like the casual viewer, like even for me at the the start of it, I thought, okay, well maybe he's just trying to really punctuate like this character that's in the center. But like the more you look at his scenes, like I feel when the when he holds on, I'm more drawn to the weird surroundings, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So I feel like he is trying to tell more of the tale or concurrently tell a tale of the 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 character you're staring at but also the environment that they're that they're sitting within because there's so much shit happening on in the backgrounds that is disturbing or interesting and confusing and I think he was trying to tell a complete tale. Do you think avoiding like the the three plot structure and the way that that kind of goes do you think that that helped create the the i guess the 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 never being able to in my opinion um fully kind of like a character in this movie attached to a uh, character because you kind of don't really get a full story there's not really a full well, it, it's there's, story arc there's, a, there's really no narrative that. at all to yeah. this film there, there's really nothing um it, it really is i mean yes we follow solomon and, and tumblr they, they seem to be the guiding force that kind yeah, of yeah they're the center of they're the, the center story. of everything but it, it's hard to tell when the time start and when they begin or when if any of this is really just episodic events in their lives or if it's a linear storyline right. I don't think it's linear um, but it, it's more a picturesque understanding of the world they live in less than a story meant to tell the tale of these two kids that are right going from one place to another. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like his like scripts say one thing and his visuals say another, like kind of juxtapose a mm-hmm. little bit. Mm-hmm. Like like the dialogue is all I don't know. I I I I see it either as poetic or as just nonsense, you know? Um but I can't believe that it's nonsense cuz I don't think he's the kind of person that would spend his time just writing nonsense, you know what well, I mean? Well, that's like yeah. So that was again. Uh, I watched this movie twice, so let me say that first. Uh, first go around, um, I was in that boat of this is nonsense, and then when I read up on the director and was reading that, like this, a lot of this movie, he's very into vaudeville and stuff like that. Yeah. And then there's the scene where Tumblr uh, is is basically doing a stand up routine, which mm-hmm. is very vaudevillian. And I found out that that's because it's it, it was very that's very because his character is based off of uh, his, the name of it is a vaudeville term for like the lowest form of a comedian. They would be like bellboys. They would be like bellboys and they'd be like telling you jokes as they carry your bags. Tumblr's oh, also okay. actually also Yiddish for agitator. Oh, did not know that. Thing, then, uh, did not look at that. And now you know, a little learning lesson yeah. for you out there. <laughs> do, 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 do. You know? But uh, no, I, I, I saw that. But then there is stuff in there that I think can be considered nonsense because uh, he gave... All, all his friends and family that were there helping him film this and the crew cameras and they went out and captured stuff in the city with real people saying real things and that wasn't scripted so that's in there so yeah you are going to get some nonsensical stuff because they're they encourage people to the, from what i understand do drugs uh to, to to if they were doing drugs not like encourage, like hey do this crack but if they were like I smoke crack, then they're like, then feel free to smoke crack, dude. We're not going to judge you. Right, right. Like that's, hmm. that's, they didn't want to use yeah. any real actors. I think there was only a few people on this uh, I, I counted, shoot. I counted four. That had any acting yeah. experience at all. Um, and the rest of them were just, yeah, characters that they kind of found along the way. It's even interesting how they found, uh, like how, how he discovered Tumblr. Uh, you know, basically he was on like a Sally Jesse Raphael show about, uh, being addicted to like huffing paint or something like that. Really? Cause that doesn't surprise me. And <laughs> so, so he tracked him down and basically was like, you, you have the right look for this character. And then for the character of Solomon, he saw him on, um, uh, in some film, like had a, a bit part and said that it's Weeville, Weeville, weird, welcome weird, to Wellville or something, something like that. Yeah. But, um, he saw him and was like, dude, I can't stop looking at this kid's face. It's like, it's so crazy <laughs> yeah. looking, you know? So he wanted to, he wanted to pull him in as well. But, 
you know, all the mostly all the rest of the characters are friends and and randoms uh, except for um Solomon's mom. Mhm. She's 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 been an actress since like 1970. Oh my God. Can I just tell you something right now? Her scene with um him in the in the basement and when she's tap dancing and he's yeah. lifting yeah. the spoons. Uh <laughs> that's what they were. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh is probably what uh is the winning scene in this movie it's fantastic me. and it goes back to that vaudevillian uh thing you were talking about the tap dancing it's it's a whole routine and she's just uh, there's something about her performance that's so good and off-putting at the same time is mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. i think it's because you know who the you know who the performers are kind of when you see them in this film like i didn't recognize I, her no no no. i'm not saying that i'm not saying that you had to recognize her but you had to recognize the fact a little bit that that, that this is a performance and not this is an actor. Not just some dude just reading lines yeah. or, and, or improving or ad libbing, whatever he felt I got like. Saying, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that was the intention to make like a collage. I mean, that's why he passed out all the different cameras because he wanted to basically make a collage of, you know, different stories. And like he had a, he had like a center story. Um, I think it said he wrote like 70 short stories, which basically kind of like were about this town in Ohio. And like he had never been there, and it's a real town or whatever. But like he just wanted to capture like the realism of of uh, of the randomness. He feels that you know actors can't get to a part of themselves like where real people show more on screen than they will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it works for this movie. I don't know if it works for every movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know that's not going to work for Mission Impossible. But you don't know that. You don't. Know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm Steve, and um, just lower me, lower me down on the wires, guys. I got it. This mission is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, it works for this movie. I think that's true for like his style of film, but I don't know if it's necessarily true for every style of film. No, I mean, I think it's been claimed that he sort of invented his own style of film. There has been a lot of that. Um. You know, you read up on. You know, it's funny when you. I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna be purely honest about it. When you pick this film, and then I got that text that like, "Yo, I'm picking Gummo." My first response was, "Fuck." Why? Like, There's two. Honestly, because <laughs> I I had seen the film at a time when um good I place. Guess you were my, in a good place. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> where you were happy about things. Yeah. Where my my film proclivities were different. Yeah. I saw them, like I said, in the early aughts or whatever. Uh, what does that even mean, the aughts? Aughts, like zeros? The 2000s. Yeah. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So that was like <laughs> a decade. What the fuck is that? Autobahn? I saw this about like like, <laughs> like a decade ago, and, and I was in a different place in terms of like my film yeah. experience and stuff like that. And I remember when I first saw it, I was kind of like, oh, this is like slacker, mm-hmm. like like link letter slacker. We're just going to follow some kids around and shit, and like, oh, this is a different life or whatever. Watching this film again, and I'm glad you picked it, it... it, it I I realized that I missed a, a shit ton, and right. now with what I know about film and what with what with what the films that I I tend to 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 gravitate to, like um, th- I had a completely different experience viewing this film. So um, yeah, I I, I, I had the same. I kind of had the same thing because I remember the first time I watched it, I was kind of um, uh, in a in a I don't know. I I wasn't into it completely. I was like I I was I was intrigued by like the 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 visuals and the characters but the second time around i felt like kind of um like in a trance like glued to it Mm -hmm. like i i i didn't and my mind wasn't even processing like that the that which is weird because since we've been doing this podcast every time i watch a movie and even if i watch a movie just for pleasure i spend the whole time like looking at everything with a little bit deeper eye like try to like criticize and find critical flaws in it and this was um this is like the first time in a year and a half that I watched a movie. I just like my brain totally shut up, and I was just kind of absorbing what I was seeing, and I, mm-hmm. I thought it was really interesting. This film has like a has a strange mood, it like does. a hypnotic mood. No, over no, it. no. I was. Uh, can I explain it this way? Real yeah, go quick? ahead. Go ahead. Um, as a first time watcher, uh, I was going to explain it to you th- for this guy's because I was waiting for someone to ask me what it was like seeing it as a first time watcher. Hey, Cody, what was it like seeing it for the first time? Uh, um, the way I would explain it is like a car wreck, right? Mm. It's really it's really hard to look at, but you can't look away. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 that's at least the 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 initial taste that I got with this film, mm-hmm. uh, the first wa- watch where it was just like, uh, 
you know, this is some really terrible stuff that is going on on my screen. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, I'm uh, so you found this. it like shocking, kind of, but also like intriguing at the same time. Uh, first, I was mad. <laughs> First, I was mad. No, and not for. No, this is good. No, I it's wanna, funny. It's, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think for the reasons that you might think, because I was like, oh, God damn it, another art house film. I was kind of mad at the the filmmaker for uh, the honesty, in a way, if that makes sense, of the, the betrayal of these Can characters. Can I ask you a question? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question because yeah. I, I think this goes back to how I kind of felt about uh, American Movie, which was whether or not the filmmaker was exploiting. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I know felt, what you I know exactly what you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. kind of that was my first like instinct was like I was kind of mad like, well this is kind of fucked up, man. You're like you're saying a lot of fucked up shit about these people. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, obviously they don't have the greatest leg up here. Yeah. Um and that was at first. Um and then uh the cinematography kicks in. Uh and that can't be ignored in this movie. And then there's something artistic. I feel like the cinematography is so artistic, and it complements the 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 chaos that is going on on screen so Mm -hmm. much that uh, it works. It balances out in a weird way. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to to where you're like, I don't know. It's 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 really nice to look at because yeah, you you there's a lot of beautiful shots. And beautiful composition, composition, right. and then there's, there's just so much fucked up going on. There's on the a, it's a, it's this it's this fantastic dichotomy that makes this film so entrancing because you're like, why am I still staring at this? Well, your reason you're staring at is because it's a perfectly composed shot, but unfortunately, what's composed in there isn't very pleasing to stare <laughs> at. Yeah. But fuck, you know. My mm. second thought was like, someone wash your feet. <laughs> <laughs> like just because you're poor doesn't mean like you can't. Wash your feet. I don't know that that bath water wasn't helping. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, right? right. Ugh, we'll get into that later. <laughs> All right, let's take a break real quick, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the uplifting film known as Gummo. You Jared Wigley? Yeah. You know Hunt? Yeah. He told me some stuff about you. What did he say? He said you've been killing cats for like the past three weeks. When do you go out? Do it during the day, usually? No, I do it mostly at night. Shoot them? No, I put glass in tuna fish. Mostly, I sprinkle poison around the dumpsters, like in the corners, or around back behind the church over there. Hunt said you take care of your granny. Yeah, she's sick. All right, guys, we are back. We're talking about uh, Gummo. Uh, let's see. Let's talk. What we? I mean, there's so many things to talk about with this movie. Uh, it's it's really weird that it, it it's kind of hard to remember too because it all happens in pieces. Yeah. Um, but there's there's just uh there's a lot of animal cruelty. So if you don't like animal cruelty, make sure you uh give this a watch. I have a question, really quick, on that topic. Yeah. Um, how much of that was uh? Because I don't know how much of that was real. How much was staged? All staged. All fake. Yeah. yeah I don't think you can do that. Post hey man, some, seventy. Uh, well, okay, so, some, in America, some some directors. I don't know. You know, they 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 just take yeah. risks. No, so. it was it was all fake. Guess um, what? Felt real. Yeah, yeah, it did. Well, <laughs> it's like the opening scene. They just drowned a cat. Yeah, but it's cut creatively. Yeah, like you don't see him actually put that live cat in there. I mean, the thing that I think makes it feel so real is the style of the film. Yeah, the using you know? the VHS cameras or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it just looks so low quality in a lot of parts that it 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 has a reality to it, or mm-hmm. so we perceive it that way. It's got that real world star but feel. But then he balances <laughs> it with like a lot of really cinematic stuff. So yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Um, can I? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Cody. I I brought this up to you outside, but I want to ask these guys just because. So. Cats, they play a pivotal role in this film. Um, I feel like, to, am I wrong to feel like I missed what the symbolic meaning of the cats were? Is there a symbolic meaning to that? Do they represent something else, or was I reading too much into it? Like, the, the, the cats in general are one pivotal, like... Just in general, because it's because... Like it, a theme. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's imagery that... that, that dominates this film I, and i'm trying to figure out if they're if the director was trying to say something 
by using the cats to represent something or if I was just reading too much into it. The ending would lead me to believe they either do mean something very specific or they're just like kind of a MacGuffin-ish kind of thing mm-hmm. that, the, that the characters are using to just drive the plot forward. Like, well, there's an over, over uh, I guess, infestation, you would say. Sure. Of a particular animal, what do we say it's going to be? Well, why not make it cats? It could have been that decision, or it could be that cats actually do represent a certain thing. What they represent, I, I don't really know. It's not like other characters. Uh, I also think there is this thing of, like, this is an actual problem. Cats do run rampant and breed a lot in rough neighborhoods because people don't get them. Fixed, well, and then you have a lot of feral cats, and it is like, a, it's like a real thing. Well, they make, yeah. they, they make a point. Uh, early in the film, there, there's that moment where they're about where uh, 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 Tumblr's about to shoot a cat, and then Solomon says, "Wait, that cat belongs to somebody." So they have a code of ethics, mm-hmm. like a moral code that says you don't shoot someone else's cat. But they ultimately do at the end because I'm wondering, it's the if, they, cat. I'm wondering if they realized that was the same cat, or if they well, were just it, trying it, to nab whatever they. The could. only thing is that it had a it had a it had a leash. Yeah. So why wouldn't they think it was a domesticated cat? I they didn't. Know. They I, didn't kill that cat. Did they? I thought they killed the bunny ears. No, I, as I understood it, it was, it's the cat that they're shooting yeah. on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I don't th- I don't know that there's like a symbolic. Mm-hmm. Or there's any symbol like you know he's trying to say something with like the use of the cats. I think maybe just where he came from and, and, and all the things he saw maybe when he was scouting locations or places he'd been, maybe that was like an impactful thing. Maybe he saw like some animal cruelty, you know, in, in this kind of setting at some point and it was a powerful imagery. So he d- recreated hmm. this because it, maybe it means something to him personally. So, so but- you think it exists, it exists purely to, to drive kind of an, uh, an emotional yeah. Point home. I kind of think so. I don't really see mm-hmm. how, if the like the cat symbolize this kind of personality. I mean, that could exist, but it didn't come across mm-hmm. that way. Interesting. I have a question about something that I didn't get. The, what the bunny boy? I don't. I was going to ask that too. Um, I've yeah. seen this a few times, and I'm not sure what. I don't if, know if, if there's any random? symbolism I, there. I, I don't know what that think, is. I don't think there is. There, there is a part of me that it doesn't even know specifically in the scene at the end where. The two sisters are making out with Bunny Boy in the pool. What that means? I don't know that he actually exists. I I I, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that he doesn't exist mm. or that he's some sort of repre- He's more of a representation of something yeah. in that town rather than somebody that you should really focus on as being. Yeah, I mean, like a human being that actually lives. I would. I I mean, I'd be inclined to to kind of uh, go with that theory mm-hmm. because I mean, he doesn't have any. He, he has zero speaking lines. And uh, and uh, a lot of the scenes where he exists, he kind of doesn't exist. Or or when he is in the same scenes with other characters, it's like where he gets shot. He's just basically laying dead and yeah. not responding to it. The only time that seems weird is the pool scene. But to your point, yeah, I don't I don't even know it, if that it, scene it's happened. It's almost like he's Jesus. Do you think he's Jesus? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no think I w- about it. I definitely it. wouldn't say that. I I think he's some sort of oh, man. How do I put this? Like a a whipping boy of sorts. He's definitely some sort of some something, some type of character that the that the the entire town kind of acts upon. Mm-hmm. He's not somebody that actually actively in any way mm-hmm. changes the story. He's not a catalyst in any way. I feel like he's an active member of the town, right? But but what we see the how the other characters actually act upon him. It, it, it kind of shows that, like when fucking squints from the uh, 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 the Sandlot decides he's going to shoot him because apparently he's a homophobe. Um, th- those two kids are shooting him and then shooting homophobic slurs at him. Yeah, like it's almost like he just kind of walks around the town and people do with with him as they, they react would. onto him. Yeah, like they project and, onto and him. And the sisters, I think, if, if anybody in this in this entire film, they're the only really good, moral, kind people in this film. Are the sisters? Yeah, you don't. Ever, they don't if ever do anything I negative. If, if this you, sounds very much like a religious figure. I'm just saying. I'm not saying necessarily Jesus, but do, like, do you, do you? I mean, listen to you talk. It, it it almost sounds like this is like a messianic figure. Yes, yeah. Where it's almost like yeah, where, you know what? Because you think about it. In the, in the, I'm sorry, I cut you off. You're absolutely right. The, 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 it could be very very well that he's some sort of messianic symbol. But I don't know. But I, I don't know. Like, again, I, don't know. I mean, in, in the fact that he 
he's almost there purely for what, to, 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 uh, for to, to other own actors, their sins to, to, for other actors to act upon. He's not an active member that ever changes anything or anything. And then, he, weirdly enough, he's the one person at the end of the film that breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, shows the dead cat as if he's the only one aware that that he's an active uh, participant in in what is a film or being watched by an audience. I mean, if you if you do so. if you do want more fuel for that fire, Cody, there there is a very very specific scene where he is riding a skateboard. In, With his arms, in, in, yeah. yeah, in the uh, crucif- and it's very, crucified pose, and it's, and it's probably his happiest scene, I would say, also, which is right after his death scene, which is why when he gets ki- when he gets killed by the two boys, he's resurrected. He's resurrected. You and know, he's here, happy, and he's and, and he's actually skateboarding through what the town. You mm-hmm. know, here's a weird thing too. If, if we want to get, we wouldn't even get even further into it. <laughs> uh, uh, what what is the day that Christ is resurrected? What do we call that? Easter. And what? who is the symbol of Easter? A bunny. bunny. Oh. oh. That was amazing. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we figured it out here on Cult Film. Who knows? Review. Who knows? I, again. No. Heard it here first. Who knows? But that's what I took it as when I Yeah, when I, when I, 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 I definitely thought he, 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 I mean, I think he's real. I just don't know that how, I, how I, real he I is. I took it as, like I, like I said again, like I took it as this weird, like, almost, like the, almost a Jesus kind of type character, but this... Uh, this higher power character that, that has the almost the most coherent story mm-hmm. in the film in a weird way. Well, actually, you know, interestingly enough, I actually did read that he uh, in the original script he was he did have dialogue. He was he had one of those uh, uh, voiceover segments oh, okay. that uh, Tumblr yeah. and Solomon have about. Oh, well, he was like in the hurricane, and I looked up the girl's dress. He had one too where he was like, it was like I have a father and blah blah blah. And for some reason, they take that all out. Hmm. So I had imagined that he took it out. Because maybe he did see, like, well, yeah. Do I want when he was pr- cutting it together, he saw the story. Do I want this person to be a real, like, active physical right thing yeah. that exists in this film? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Bit more mysterious this way. Mm-hmm. I always wondered that. I just wondered that because he was. He seems like it seems like the most out of place thing, especially the way it opens up with it. You know, of just like because I'm like, oh, here's a homeless boy with rabbit ears, but then it was like, I don't. I don't know the rest. I question the rest of if he was just a homeless boy or if he represented more than a homeless boy. I mean, seeing how the seeing how the film progresses, it makes sense that he had had lines cut, and I wonder how much if he had more scenes and stuff yeah. cut down because with the way it opens, you're, he he's presented to you as a character right on par with Tumblr and like yeah he, he's he's on that bridge. He's just. He he he's he's basically just bored and and like he's he's kicking the thing he's pissing on traffic he, he you know he's doing all these things but then for the for the rest of the film he almost takes on more of a symbolic role. After well, I mean, that. if you're gonna go by traditional storytelling methods, I mean, a co- a, a common way that you know who the first char- who the who the narrator of a story is, it's the first guy that shows up on yeah. the screen, mm-hmm. and in this one, it's him, but. But I think he was he like fucking disappears. He's gone. I, but yeah. that's exactly it's, it. It's is. He was Solomon. fighting against traditional storytelling with this. Oh, absolutely. Film. Like that wasn't yeah. ever even a you know. But I like the theory that he could mm-hmm. be that type of figure because I, I never thought that. Yeah. Um, but like I, I really don't think he is the center point of the story. I think it's definitely Solomon and Tumblr. Like I, I, I feel like they're the. If you're gonna latch onto oh, any no, character in this film, it's gonna be those two. Oh, there's one. The one that's way above them, who stood out in my heart, the mom. No, the guy playing, uh, whatever he's playing, wall ball or whatever he's playing with. Oh, the, the tennis. No, he's the playing rac- tennis, right? No, it's like ball. 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 Oh, yeah. that Dude, guy's like. Just I like lost it. I laughed so hard at that mullet. That haircut was oh, pretty sick. Oh my dude. god, it was bitching. It was so <laughs> bitching. It, was, it can only be described as bitching. And his whole his whole uh, attributing his better play to ADD was uh, fantastic. <laughs> also, uh, Chris, I wanted to actually ask you a question. Um, so we we discussed like who if, if there is any any main characters in this, it's Solomon and Tumblr. Who do you think is like between those two though? There's one scene that makes me feel a little weird. It's the scene where they go in and they have sex with the uh, girl who clearly has Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that they shoot that is kind of strange to me that suggests that it might be Solomon who is more of the voice of... If, if there is any voice over this whole film, it's him. Tumblr goes in there and we don't get any... Yeah, underst- right. Like, we don't know what's going on other than we know that the brother is, like, looking in on them. And then uh, uh, Solomon is like looking up, so yeah. it's from his point of view. Yeah, we only see 
that situation occur, that whole thing uh, occur when Solomon walks in the room. Yeah. Right. So, I feel like I'm they, they each if... have their own moments, though, because was Solomon there during like the chair wrestling scene? I don't think he was there. It was, no, it he was wasn't. Tum- he it was Tumblr. So, that was Tumblr's like, family. Yeah, well, but I think they each have their own moments, like what you're describing. Like To me, like... The, the 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 power and the imagery of that scene being with with Solomon in, in the room with the you know down girl with Down syndrome, uh, e- had the equal effect with Tumblr in that scene where he's in the kitchen and everybody's basically getting wasted and, and yeah but, but but then again like Solomon has that scene with his mother yeah the bad, I'm trying the to figure out scene. why that I I guess I'm trying to dissect that scene specifically as why that was so why that was cut the way it was why think? not show both both characters and how they are different in the way they react to that situation. Oh, I see. Because Solomon, he, he goes in there and I don't even know that he well, really has I, sex I, with her. I think I he to, just kind of like... I, I think I have an answer for that is because the, the, the imagery of like a 13-year-old kid going in there is a lot stronger than the imagery of like a 17-year-old kid going in there. Mm-hmm. Like there's something a lot more taboo about like a 13-year-old going in. And, and actually that scene I really love because... You don't see anything. They don't show anything explicit. It's all implied. But, you know, it's actually kind of somewhat romantic with Solomon. Like, if you can even use that word in this film. Like, you know, he has a conversation with her. You know, do you think I'm attractive? And, you know, she answers him honestly, you know. And, like, they have this kind of interesting dialogue together. And you never see any kind of... It never goes too far. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? But the idea of it makes you think that it goes too far. I was gonna say, uh, my theory on on, on that of, is maybe it's his look, because I think I agree with Chris in that I feel like they equally have these scenes that, like I also feel like Tumblr got the 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 grandma scene where they kill the grandma. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. that was also his another one of his big powerful scenes, and and yeah. and uh, that might combat the, the 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 mom scene in the in the basement. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's the look of Solomon is so unique that you focus on him when they're on the screen together, you yeah. focus on him 90% of the time. I mean, for I would Christ's sake, he's on the cover of the box. Yeah, I, like, would, I, would, I would definitely agree with that because even the scene you, scenes you guys brought up where, where he's wrestling with his family and, and hanging and, um, but tumbles with his family and stuff. He's got kind of a look that is, um, Almost invisible. He blends in. He blends in when he's around all those other people. Whereas Solomon, he's such a powerful uh, look to him. Even even when his hair isn't fully like puffed out, you know, he just has a really unique face. And yeah, I think it just sticks with you a little bit more. And I think there is something also to be said: the fact that he is like what thirteen ish, and he's because he's younger. He even though he's there is no scenes in this movie whatsoever with that I could honestly use the label as an innocent he still is kind of like an innocent the, the innocent of the two well, his mom's bringing him food in the bathtub yeah, exactly you know he's, what still, I mean? like, he's still he's still a house. kid that house i know oh god the tub the water maybe that's what it is maybe that's what it is maybe maybe his scenes are so much more powerful because when you're looking at tumblr he just seems like kind of a lost well, lost adolescent or lost, lost adult whereas whereas um I just forgot his fucking Solomon. Solomon, Solomon is a kid. He's still a kid. He's still being taken care well, of by his th- mother. That's one thing I did notice too. Is that uh, they? I don't think they ever showed Tumblr's home. They showed no. Yeah, they did. They showed his did father. They? I thought they just always showed. He him has on a, the he has a one on one scene with his father in and the then, car, and then, then that then, switches over to the the chair breaking. Scene. I, yeah, but I didn't think that was Tumblr's house. I thought that was the coke dealer's house. Oh, it could have been. I don't the know. Neighborhood that, coke dealer's house. Yeah, but they didn't the show him. Yeah, he was the big guy. No, right. Was yeah. that the bigger, the bigger blonde dude? We're no, talking no, no. about no the coke, the coke dealer. They, they showed images of him, but he was never an oh, active. I always thought character. that. I thought. I sorry. I related him to the the. You thought he was the guy with all the aggressive. Oh yeah, like, no, that yeah. wasn't him. That wasn't him. And, the, and, yeah. the, and that that guy scene. was a burnet. This guy was like a redhead. Well, you know, they how, all look like how did you feel about the scene with uh, the the white dude and the black dude on the couch? That's uh, the director. Yeah, yeah, it is, and I didn't re- I didn't remember that he was in his own film, and yeah. and then I saw that scene. I'm like, is that him? And then the scene just got so strange. He was actually, from, from what I read from the history of this, he was actually drunk when he when he. I don't think you could that. act that well. And, yeah. Like and, he was drunk. And the, actually, the guy that he was acting against um, was a high school friend. Good friend. Yeah. 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 
Well, they played it very awkwardly together, they which did worked a really out. Good job, <laughs> yeah, it did a really good job. Um, what, to, what are you asking? What's to be gleaned from that scene? No, I was just saying, like, did it catch you off? Did it catch you by surprise? How did, did you it, feel yeah. about it? Is what his original question like, was. Because for me, it was like, it, it like I, there was a lot of things going on for me. I was like, okay, this is like a weird setup, and it was just like a little blip in the movie, you know. But it was like. The shit he was saying, like, I feel like I'm coming out of my mother's womb and all this stuff. I was just like, this is so awkward and hilarious, but like kind of like freaky at the same time. Like yeah. I, just the way I mean, for him to put himself in his own film and 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 create that kind of scene, which I think is the last scene they shot in the film. Oh, like okay. Okay. that that's a testament to his art i feel like is he's willing to put himself you know in I, it as well what i my little my little fan theory on that was was that that was tumblr's brother oh no but tumblr's brother didn't he he moved away he moved but away yeah. then again city. this movie doesn't follow any kind of uh, yeah. Timeline whatsoever, so I mean, it I realistically could have been. I guess it could have been. It could have been it's... because some of the stuff he was talking about his mother, like I feel like was echoed slightly when Tumblr was having the one on one with his father. Some of the stuff his father was saying about his mother, some of the stuff seemed kind of. I I I, I can see where you're going it's, with it's that. It's possible that because I thought the same thing initially that he was closeted, has this scene. With this guy who turns him down because, you know, just because you're gay, you're the gay guy in a fucking small town doesn't mean you want to fuck a guy. You know, um, it's possible that he goes to the big city because sure. he's in a very restricted area mm-hmm. yeah. where where his homosexuality can't be, like, fully explored right. in any way. I mean, that's possible. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I, but they don't, they, I initially I don't know thought... Sure. I, yeah. Honestly, I don't know for sure. But I don't know if it, for sure either, but I, I initially thought the exact same thing, Cody. Yeah. So there you go. There you have that, Chris. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Another boom. <laughs> Stick a dynamite you didn't even know was lit. Yeah, I didn't even Another know. Another boom what from Colt Film and Review. <laughs> uh any favorite quotes from anybody? Uh the only quote that I actually remember laughing at was I knew a guy who was dyslexic, but he was also cross eyed, so everything came out right. <laughs> I feel one, like that like describes this movie kind of. <laughs> that one did make me laugh too. Say I don't have like a favorite quote because there's I feel like every line in this film could be considered some kind of quote. But the one scene of dialogue that like sticks with me and like I'm I laugh but I don't know if I should is when the rabbit walks up to the two cowboy kids and they shoot him dead and just all the foul shit that they're saying like is so again it's another one of those like weird moments where you're like I'm awkward because it's so intense but like kind of hilarious because of the accents that they have well like, you could tell the kids weren't comfortable either because the littler one looks into the camera. Yeah, at one point, it, like this, did, like is this okay? Like oh. to say that? Can I, know, I tell you another moment? I know when that what happened? you're gonna say. The two brothers yeah. that are beating the shit out the of each other. Skinhead brothers. One, one of the skinhead brothers to the left, who are actually, I guess, high school, also high school friends yeah. uh, of Harmony Connick. Um, what was that? Coring. Harmony Connick. Coring. Sorry. <laughs> Kana. Harmony. Harmony Coring, uh, who is also uh, friends of them. Uh, one of them definitely like looks into the camera like, "Are we good? Are yeah. we done? Are we I done?" I just got punched in the face. Can we stop now? Yeah, can like, we stop now? That had to be a ho- that was that, a real I mean, fight. Real- I mean, like, yeah, dude, they were hitting each other hard. They yeah. were. That in had to face. be a really difficult scene to shoot. Can I read your fortune? This big line says you're gonna be a millionaire. It says your it says your wife gonna die in a hay fire. But I don't have a wish. You both are ain't gonna be me. <laughs> Do you love me? Yes. Do you think I'm attractive? No, you look fine where you are, skinny. So one of the things I did want to talk about was like the the legends of this movie as far as the director and the cinematographer. I guess they shot and so these locations are real, some most of them or some of them are, I guess, uh real and they are as filthy as they were, and some of the crew was not Happy with that? Yeah, like they protested against yeah. it. They were like, I'm not going in there. And so they, he had to buy hazmat suits. <laughs> so he, the, he found that that was offensive. So him and the cinematographer wore Speedos and flip-flops. Yeah, to, to basically protest them being babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which was like, I, 
and it's the that's a, just a crazy weird story to me. I, I kind of yeah. love that. I love that story too. But at the same time, it's just like what a what a weird set that would be to we- be on. Was, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, your director's in a speedo. Everybody's in hazmat suits, well, and you're in this uh, filthy place. I don't know. Everybody kind of looked like they were on something, anyways. So it was all weird. I mean, yeah. that was probably I would imagine. The, the, cockro- the cockroach, the cockroach scene where he lifts the picture and all the cockroaches come out I of think, the wall. I like, think it was most of those houses. Most of those houses are real, and if you look at it, like there was a lot of hoarding going disgusting. on. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely in uh, Solomon's house. That place yeah. looked like a fucking nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> like a trash bomb went off. Yeah. But, but I, to, to, to go to the cruise, <laughs> but I, a well stacked trash bomb. I mean, we're joking about how the crew, like, oh, okay, they did the the the, the flip flop thing, and that's. Think about this for a second. You, somebody calls you up and they go hey uh we need you to be a gaffer uh <laughs> on this film and you show up there and it's like okay here's how we're gonna do this uh this because i heard other stories that um they were run out of many houses from fathers with shotguns because they believe that harmony uh corine was actually shooting child pornography with their kids yeah there's I, a I, lot I of stories that. of like really like they, they gorilla film make this whole fucking film for a million dollars hmm so imagine you're getting hired and you're like a fucking gaffer or a lighting <laughs> whatever and and then like you're you're being run out of a house with a guy with a shotgun. So you think that they walked in totally blind to what what I mean I mean I mean how how does any of this work? You you do you take a job because you're like oh, okay yes guys co-wrote kids. I love that film. I know I guess the you know he, like, he seems like somebody that would use people he kind of he wouldn't just call someone up randomly. I don't. Well, think. I imagine the cinematographer yeah. if anything had a crew. I feel right. like the cinematographer was in on this, and he was really yeah, into this. Yeah, he was he was a legendary cinematographer. He was a French. Uh, like I feel like he was like, yeah, we'll wear speedos and flip flops for the art. Fuck these guys. All right, so we're gonna rate. The, what are we gonna rate this, Chris? What do you want to rate this? We're gonna rate it tubes of model glue. Tubes of model glue. Yeah, and that's because they're for some reason they're always huffing glue in this film and for getting some high. reason. I don't know why that's their drug of choice, but I mean it's probably because it, you know, it's cause, cheap. And, yeah. And yeah, they, apparently they get it for free yeah. with dead cats from their local uh, butcher or whatever. Yeah, who it was. sells it to the uh, Chinese food restaurant? Apparently, mm-hmm. so <laughs> chopped up cats. Think about that next time there you eat go. Chinese. All right, so let's go ahead and start with Mike then. Okay, so uh, like I said previously, when 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 Chris had initially picked this film, I was like, "Holy shit, fuck!" Like, because uh, I remember uh, disliking this film quite a bit. Seeing it now. I don't remember what I gave Holy Mountain. I think I gave it a four. I'm going to give this film a four and a half. Wow. Uh, I was transfixed by this film. And I, I don't know if it's it's where I've, where I've uh, tra- traversed in terms of my filmmaking excursion in life or whatever, or where I have explored and where I've ended up. And this is, the, this is where my journey has taken me. Uh, I was absolutely... I, I absolutely love this film. And I, I feel that... Where I differ uh, from a Holy Mountain versus this film, it's the same thing. It's this real portrait of like white America that we're very we 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 here in this room are not privy of knowing. Like no one's ever. Like, I mean, Cody, you said that you saw shadows of it. Yes, yeah. But like this is a place that exists. Oh yeah. And the way that this director shows it in such a surreal portrait. Is I mean it's beautiful. It's a weird, beautiful, disgust. It's a, it's it's disgusting and beautiful at the same time. But I can't help but feel sympathy for the characters and and what he's trying to do. The where I differ in it from a Holy Mountain is that they both end. The both those films, these films end in the same way with a weird breaking of the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. I feel like Jodorowsky kind of ends it with a uh, kind of a preachy way of saying like this is the world that you should live in this is what I was trying to say right. you know this one I don't really know what to think by this kid showing me this dead cat but I didn't feel like it was preachy mm-hmm. I felt it was more like this is the world this is the world that that I've shown to you and I'm shoving it in your face in a weird way. Mm. But not in a way that I felt like I had to be an active participant in fixing it or that it's my job to do anything. It felt very honest in that way, in a way that I feel like the Holy Mountain kind of wasn't. So for that, I'm going to give this a four and a half. I fucking love this film. I love this film. All right, let's go with Kyle next. Kyle? Um, yeah, so like I said, I'd seen this movie... Um 
couple of years ago, and I I don't re- really recall having any kind of um, any kind of uh, opinion on the matter after I watched it. It was more or less just kind of left. It's a it's a movie that just kind of leaves you in I don't say a somber state, but it leaves you in an interesting sort of place where you're thinking about it, and you'll think about it for a couple of days afterwards. Um, seeing again, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, um, I've found this movie putting me into a very um, trance-like state. Like, I couldn't pull my eyes away from the film. I necess- I, I, I didn't necessarily... I couldn't necessarily decide if, like, I if I like this film before, if I'm indifferent to it. And, but it just kept me thinking. It kept me actually wanting more of it. Um, I'm actually surprised by myself. I'm going to give this movie five. Um, I think it's an impressive, impressively made film. And some of the stuff that we talked about before, which is how he beautifully frames these shots but what's happening in that frame is kind of disturbing and upsetting but in a very poetic and beautiful way um i think this is this is this is a great film that i feel like i'm gonna have to watch a couple more times to really kind of wrap my head around what's what's trying to be said in it so five for me i'll go next uh i man i agree uh, all the way around with everyone on this uh, in, in a certain extent. It's really weird. Uh, I watched it twice. Um, I found myself more interested in it the second time I watched it than the first. Uh, it made me want to watch it a second time. Uh, I, I don't know if this is... This movie's definitely not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong in saying that. But it is like watching a car wreck. It is horrifying what you are seeing. There are limbs on the road. Uh, but you can't turn away. Uh, and for some reason, the the limbs are laid out like beautiful art. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird. It's so weird. It's like yeah. it's this is disgusting and it's uh, perverted and it's uh, um, you know just uh, d- 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 just evil also. <laughs> but you but uh, beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. weird. It's fucking weird, man. It is. And the, where I would say it's it, it different from. Uh, holy mountain in comparison is just that this one actually gave me the feels this this will instantly either make you mad sad you will feel you know what i mean like and it's not so far out of reach to under like to to be i don't know i I guess you don't have to figure it out as much but you do still have to figure it out as much yeah you know what I mean? You get what he's trying to make you feel right away. That's a good point. You don't I, have to get. You don't have to. Guess. I never once felt like I was on a on a, on a, a, a mystery tour. Yeah. <laughs> like I had to. Like I had. Like it, it. As me as an audience member, I never once felt like it yeah, was. This, it was put on me to discover. Yep. I was just meant to observe. Observe this. Uh, a lot of honestly, a lot of negative and bad feelings. Um, which is weird to say that I enjoyed that. I'm mm-hmm. kind of, I'm really kind of confused with the, how I feel about this movie. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it four. Um, I'll watch this again. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone, honestly, just because. Um, I mean, watch to anyone? it. Anyone? I mean, why? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, like, watch it, but. I wouldn't recommend it as, hey, you know what? You and your family got you know, yeah. a nice yeah. Saturday night. Sit the kids down. Put yeah. some popcorn on the stove. Throw some gum on like, there. If someone, like, uh, if someone said, like, what's a good, what's your favorite art house film? I would have to say right now, Gummo, because I don't yeah. like art house films. And this is the most interesting art house film that we've done that I found that I, I actually enjoyed. Awesome. Wow. I can't believe it's not rubber. <laughs> Can't believe it wasn't Man Bites Dog. Yeah, why is it not that? <laughs> I don't get it. Last but not least, because it's his pick, Chris Wilbrick. Uh, I can't believe this film has a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know why. It doesn't matter why. It, right. The, 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 